Some Virgo scientific collaborations have just announced a brand new detection, GW1908-14. This event is a bit special and requires us to delve into some of the science behind the observation. So I'm Garen Pratton, a postdoctoral researcher here at the University of Burnham and a gravitational wave researcher in the LIGO collaboration. And our puzzle really does begin with a stellar graveyard. So when stars reach the end of their lives, they can undergo cataclysmic explosions called supernova and the star is blown apart. And all of this happens within a matter of seconds. So these really are quite violent phenomena. Now, most of the star will be blown into the surrounding environment, leaving behind a core or a remnant. This remnant can be several times heavier than our own sun, so they really are quite massive objects in their own right. However, a number of distinct astrophysical scenarios can play out depending on the exact mass and composition of this remnant. If, after the supernova, the remnant has enough mass, then the gravitational field is sufficiently strong that gravitational collapse will continue, um, the star will collapse in on itself, and a black hole will be born. Now, black holes that are produced this way um, will have masses that are five to several tens of times that of our own sun. So these are quite heavy black holes. For stars that are initially less massive, so their gravitational fields are weaker, then the remnant of the massive star can collapse into a super dense object called a neutron star. So neutron stars are only a little bit heavier than our own sun, but are so incredibly dense that the entire star has a radius of 10 or 11 kilometers. So this would be like taking our very own sun and compressing it into an object about the size of Birmingham itself. So these really are quite fascinating and exotic astrophysical objects. Now the heaviest known neutron stars are about 2.5 times the mass of our own sun, or about 2.5 solar masses, um, whereas the lightest known black holes are about 5 solar masses. So what can we say about all other masses in between? This is actually known as the mass gap and is one of the current outstanding questions on understanding the origin and evolution of neutron stars and black holes. Why do we observe an apparent gap between the heaviest neutron stars and the lightest black holes? On the 14th of August 2019, the LIGO and Virgo gravitational wave detectors observed a rather special event, GW1908-14, and what we observed was the merger of two compact objects, where the smallest object only had a mass of 2.6 solar masses, and the heaviest object 23 solar masses. So the largest object is clearly a black hole, but the smaller object is a real peculiarity. We don't know if this object was the heaviest known neutron star that likes known black hole. If this was a black hole, then it exists in the mass gap right where we would not expect to find such black holes. Now, it could be that this mass gap doesn't really exist and that limitations in our ability to observe such light black holes has prevented us from seeing them before. This is something we really hope to understand um, using gravitational wave observations. Now, when we do observe a gravitational wave signal such as GW1908-14, an alert is sent to astronomers around the globe, enabling, enabling them to point the telescopes in the direction of the signal. Now, the key goal here is to hunt for any electromagnetic radiation. This would be a key indicator that one of the compact objects was indeed a neutron star. For GW1914, dozens of ground and space-based telescopes participated in dedicated follow-up campaigns, but so far no such electromagnetic signal has been observed. So what could this tell us about GW1914? Firstly, if the signal was produced by the merger of two black holes, then Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts that we wouldn't see any electromagnetic signal. If, however, the merger was of a neutron star and a black hole, we could hope that the neutron star is torn apart by the extreme gravitational fields producing an electromagnetic signal. However, for GW1914, the larger black hole was so much bigger than the smaller object, and if this was a neutron star, it is highly likely that it would have been swallowed whole by the black hole before it had a chance to be torn apart so we wouldn't have seen any electromagnetic signal anyway. Finally, GW1914 is more than six times further away than the binary neutron star merger we observed in 2017, and this means that any electromagnetic signal could have just been too faint for us, to observe, for us to observe. So unfortunately, this question is still open. That we were not able to see any electromagnetic radiation is in good agreement with our current understanding and theories, and it is really only by observing many more of these events with gravitational wave detectors and working closely with international teams of astronomers that we can start to find enough pieces of the puzzle to solve the mystery. I hope you found this useful and thank you for listening. If you have any comments, please leave them below and we'll try to respond as many as we can. Thank you.